All roads lead to the property show brought to you by privateproperty.co.za. The show is happening on the 27th and 28th of August 2022. It will be taking place at the Santon Convention Center, but also note that you can participate virtually. Get your tickets now at thepropertyshow.co.za. Welcome to the Private Property Podcast. My name is Tumi and I hope you had a good day. Tonight we are talking the A to Z of agricultural property and what you need to know if that is what you are looking into going into. I'm talking to David Laurie tonight who is the agricultural specialist at Commercial Farmers for Sale. David, good evening and thank you so much for taking our time to talk to us tonight. Good evening to me and it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you so much. We are talking agricultural farming. It's quite a peculiar subject and something very, very different from the norm. So please take us through your journey in a nutshell, how you started and how you got into agricultural property. So um, I, I was bo- brought up on a, on a farm in Zim. And so uh, that that's where it all started. Um, I was involved in business in Joburg for quite a few years and uh, then I ventured out into farming uh, because that's that's my passion and and I really love the agricultural sector Um, and uh, yeah from from that I I got into agricultural farm sales and I also sell related equipment so I do the whole like turnkey thing if uh, (laughs) If a client needs tractors, implements, livestock, trucks, whatever, I'll, I'll help them with the whole solution. Sure. And t- just take us through how the agricultural space looks in terms of property and buying land. You know, um, How different is it for, um, f- uh, as compared to other sectors in terms of uh, residential property and commercial property? What are some of those unique things that exist when one is buying agricultural land? So buying a farm is uh, basically like buying a business. You know, the, uh, the, the, the property, the, the farmland is the factory for, for want of a better word. And um, so, so your land is, is like your plant and then you've got the business on top of that. So it's not just a simple uh, property transaction it's a whole like uh, turnkey business that you're actually Mm. buying you know so um depending on what uh what type of farm it is um you'll get a vegetable crop or you'll get cattle or you'll get maize or an orchard um what whatever like uh sort of uh farming type you want to go into Sure. And apart from um, coming on to privateproperty.co.za, of course, and, you know, using a portal like that to find uh, land, what are some of the things one should do in order to prepare themselves when they're going in to, to uh, buy a business like this, as you mentioned, or property like this? Um, is there any particular um, research that they need to do in terms of uh, getting to understand the land and um, what it can produce? What are some of the uh, advices that you could give around that? Oh, yeah, um, look, uh, different, uh, different types of land are suited to different crops. Uh, you've also got the climate zones that you need to look at. Um, for example, if you were looking at a cane farm, you need a lot of heat. You need uh, large, large areas of land, and it doesn't necessarily have to be flat land. I mean, if you look at the... Uh, the, the north and the south coasts of KwaZulu, um, the, those are ma- mainly like hilly wastelands, and but they they're really good for cane. You know? um, if you wanted to do avocados or or nuts um, up sort of uh, Limpopo areas around Zanin or Pumalanga are like suited for that, and. Um, then large parts of the Northwest province are more suited to like your maize and your sunflowers. And uh, together with that, um, you've, you've got cattle farming because the, the cattle go and uh, into the lands once the crops have been harvested and uh, they eat all the fodder. And so 
maize and cattle farming basically go together. And then um, near your large sort of urban areas, you've got your veg production facilities there. They need to be close to markets and um, uh, like easily accessible, you know, because, uh, because you're transporting uh, perishable goods. Sure. And let's talk about the process. You know, just um, a couple of episodes ago, we were talking about um, one um, getting offer to purchases and what are some of the things that one needs to look at when they are assigning offer to, uh, to buy purchases and offer to, to, to sell. You know, so what are some of those things that they need to look at, um, look into specifically when they are looking at that process? Um, any advice that you could give around those legalities? So, um, look, basically... Uh, I deal in the commercial sector, so that mm. that means you're buying a, a farmland and and a business. You know, so you've got to go into the history of the business. You've got to look at the financial performance um, and do a proper a proper analysis. There's also normally a lot of assets, so um, you've got to make sure that those assets that you're buying are in good condition and that they're properly valued. And so uh, valuations can play a, a key role. And um, then then you need like business plans and uh, projections and that sort of thing, uh, you know, because uh, banks obviously uh, want to know that they're getting a proper return. Uh, and it's a, it's a safe bet when, when they're backing someone going into a farm. Sure. And uh, go ahead, please. Okay. I was going to say, um, typically, like a commercial bank, they, they would look for like a forty percent deposit. Um, but uh, like, if if you operating the BE sector, um, it can be anything from ten to fifteen percent. Um, and th there's also some. Uh, government institutions that uh, are, are involved in the agri-sector, but uh, they, their requirements have become a lot more stringent in the last couple of years. Sure. And looking at the agricultural property market right now, especially with all the dynamics that we are having in the country and even in the world with COVID-19 mm. coming in and yeah. slowly phasing out, um, what are some of those things that we are seeing in the in the market now? How how have things changed? Um, has there been any positive impact and even challenges that you are now experiencing as because of these unique circumstances? So I, I think with the, um, what, what COVID did for the agri-sector is make people realize the importance of uh, food security. And, um, you know, a, lo a lot of businesses were in turmoil through, through COVID, but uh, the bottom line is people still needed to eat and sustain mm -hmm. themselves. So uh, a lot of uh, big businesses realized the importance of the agricultural sector. And uh, just coming to this year with the, with the war in the Ukraine and Russia, um, you know, the, there's a big fear currently about uh, um, grain shortages and oil shortages and that. And uh, again, um, that, that has been good for the, for the South African uh, uh, agricultural sector, you know, because mm. it seemed as like a more stable area to produce from. And um, yeah, so that's, that's been positive. The, neg the negative thing, of course, has been the huge increase in the oil prices and uh, your fertilizers, because your, your fertilizers like come, come off the crude uh, price. So inputs mm. are, are rocketing, but uh, it's across the board. Eh? You know, there, there's not much we can do about that. So, sure. um, yeah. And where are we seeing it go? You know, um, with all of with all of these things happening, what can one uh, brace themselves up for if somebody's already in the market and somebody's already in agricultural farming or even property investing? You know, um, in terms of buildings, building um, um, homes and different estates that are even in farms. Where where do we see it going in the next couple of months and even years? 
to me, I think, uh, you know, um, I th from an African perspective, I, th I think it's uh, pretty good news. I think mm -hmm. that uh, people are seeing that Africa from like a, a sort of a, as, as a more stable place to, to produce from. Um, an, another factor that uh, is like got a huge impact on agriculture at the moment is the global warming. I mean, we've got record high temperatures across Europe at the moment, and uh, that obvious, obviously affects the crop production and that kind of thing. So, uh, um, and I don't think Africa is bad as uh, is as badly affected from a, a global warming perspective as let's say Europe and North America and those more developed uh, continents. Eh? So I, th I think the outlook for, for Africa is good. Obviously the, uh, the, the, the political uh, stability and like being business friendly is a big, big thing which uh, international players uh, look at. And um, they, I think, uh, we need to sort out things and uh, hopefully the government comes to the party on that. Eh? Sure. No, definitely. And hopefully things start looking up because, you know, the, uh, Africa and South Africa particularly has so much potential when we're talking agriculture. So hopefully yeah. things do look up in that space. Um, what yeah. advice would you have for somebody who is a potential investor? Someone is sitting at home, they are either just starting off or they are potentially looking at going into the space in the next couple of years. What advice would you give them, whether it be legal wise, uh, even how to manage these things and um, some of those things that are very, very pertinent and important when you're going into the space? Look, I, I think that uh, the thing that's really, really key is for, for people that want to get into the sector is for them to understand that uh, farming is actually hard work and um, you, you've, you've got to have the passion for, for the industry as well, um, you know. Um, so uh, you, you've, you've got to be prepared to roll up your sleeves and uh, it's also um, a longer term kind of investment, you know, mm. where uh, you'll, you'll only start making money like between uh, th three and eight years, depending on what type of operation you, um, you're getting into. Um, another thing is it's quite uh, capital intensive. Uh, there, there are a lot of costs involved. So uh, you, you, your financial planning and having the capital to get through and uh, make make uh, make the thing uh, work is really really key as well. No, thank you so much for that, uh, uh, David. Really, really great insights coming through there around the the agricultural land. And I just really want to wrap the conversation up and ask you any last words before we let you go tonight. Look to me, um, you know, uh, if if people want to get involved in the agri sector, um, they're welcome to get into in touch with me. Um, I think that uh, the market is pretty buoyant at the moment and the, 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 the good business opportunities out there. Eh? Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Totally. Thank you so much. You know, as you were talking, I was already hearing hard work makes the dream work. Thank you so much, David, for Absolutely. joining us and have a good evening. <laughs> Thank you to me. Cheerio. Cheers. And we have reached the end of tonight's episode where we were talking everything and anything you need to know about obtaining agricultural land, buying that farm, and starting your property investment journey. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And remember to get your tickets for the property show at thepropertyshow.co.za. Have a good night.